Hello, this is Joel the Skata Hacker with a demonstration today that's going to take a look at stateful versus stateless access control that we typically see in firewall security appliances and how this could actually be exploited by a potential attacker to gain access, unauthorized access, to your trusted internal networks. To perform the demonstration, I've built a system that consists of two networks, which I've called an untrusted network and another that is a trusted network, pretty representative of a production environment. The untrusted network resides in a 192.168.11 IP space and the trusted on a 10.1.1.0 space. There are two computers in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to interact with these two computers through the security appliance to see how different rules will impact different communications. In both cases, these computers have their default gateways configured as the corresponding interface on the particular security appliance. I also have a computer connected to a third interface, which will be used for management or configuration of the particular security appliance. So let's get started. To demonstrate the security appliance, today I've chosen the Viata security tool. The reason I did this is that Viata gives me a lot of granularity over how packets are actually processed through each of their interfaces, which is very good to allow us to effectively turn off or turn on stateful inspection of traffic through our security appliance. To start, we've got four interfaces on this particular appliance. And again, we're interested in Ethernet interfaces two and three. Two represents our trusted network, which is in the 10.1.1 space. And three represents our untrusted network, which is the 192.168.11 space. And this particular interface is getting its address through a DHCP server. Also on each interface, we have the ability to assign different firewall rules to the ingress, the egress, and local security appliance traffic. So in this particular demonstration, I'm going to focus on rules that will be applied to the ingress of each of the interfaces. And to keep things simple, the name group that I've used actually corresponds to the interface name. So if we come up on the firewall section, you'll see I have two groups configured where we're going to add a variety of rules. And right now, there are no rules configured. And we've assigned a default action to drop all packets that don't meet any other rules. So of course, in this case, the security appliance is basically preventing 100% of the traffic through. So if we start, we'll go to our trusted computer. And I'm going to begin by using a simple ping command. So what I would like to try is to ping from our trusted network to our untrusted network. Well, of course, that's not going to work because our security appliance blocks all traffic. So let's come in here and let's actually configure a simple rule that will allow the ICMP ping traffic through. So I'll start with the trusted network interface. I will create a rule that will accept ICMP traffic. I will commit this. We'll come back to our trusted computer. We'll retype the command. But as you see, it is not being responded to. We are not getting a ping response from our host that resides on the untrusted network. Well, the reason for this, of course, is because the echo ICMP command is actually being sent through Ethernet interface 2, but the echo reply is the one that must come in on Ethernet interface 3, the untrusted interface, and then get processed through the appliance and come back and act as our response. So what we have to do is we need to create a corresponding rule on the untrusted interface. So again, we'll come up here. We'll create a rule. This rule, again, we will accept ICMP traffic. We will commit it. Come back to our node. And now ping works. Well, the downside of this, as you probably were very easy to recognize, is that it also will allow 
pings to go from our untrusted host to a trusted host. And this usually is not a desirable scenario. So there are two ways to accomplish this. The first would be to further restrict the particular codes of the ICMP traffic, meaning we would only let echoes out on Ethernet Interface 2, and then we would only process the echo replies coming back on Ethernet Interface 3. But since this is a discussion on state, I'm going to accomplish the same thing by adjusting state for this ICMP traffic. And as you're probably saying, ICMP is a stateless communication. However, that's one reason why I really like the Viata appliance in this case is because I can simply come into this ICMP rule and I can now add a state parameter, which will allow me to create a rule that will allow the new sessions to go through on the trusted network and on the untrusted network, it will only process those packets that are part of an established session. Now, I've deliberately done something here to show a point. I'm going to clear the screen here, and we're going to retype the ping command. And what you're going to notice is one positive response. But with Windows, ping always sends out four requests or four echoes. The other three are going to come back rejected or dropped. The reason for that is because in our rule for the trusted interface, we only selected the new state. After the first packet is set, the session is actually established. And what we need to do is we need to create an established flag as well as a new flag. So now all four ping requests are, resp are replied. Meanwhile, if we go back on our untrusted computer and try to ping the host on the trusted network, all of these are blocked. So we have a very desirable scenario. Now, we're not really getting very far showing this with ping, so let's do something a little bit more realistic that we see commonly configured on firewalls. And that has to do with name resolution when we use DNS servers. Typically, we want to process outbound DNS requests through security appliances and let them send the reply back through the appliance. So if we go back to our appliance, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our trusted network, and we're going to test this using the NS lookup command. So if I do an NS lookup on Google, it's not going to get responded to because our DNS server is on the untrusted side of our security appliance and everything's blocked other than ICMP traffic. So let's come back here and let's build something similar to our ICMP rule for DNS traffic. I'm going to call this rule two. I'm going to accept. Now with DNS, I need to accept both TCP and UDP traffic. And when we're on the trusted network, the destination is going to be set to port 53. So I set destination port 53. And then I come down here on my untrusted network. Again, I build a new rule. And this particular rule, again, very similar. I accept TCP UDP. But now, since this is the reply, I actually have to configure the source add source port of 53. Let's commit these changes. I'm going to close this up because we're going to be back here in a little bit. Let's come back to our computer in the trusted network. Let's retype our NS lookup command and we get a reply through our security appliance. Now as you're probably aware we have not configured state. So that means any unsolicited traffic that has TCP source port of 53 is going to be, allow, be allowed from our untrusted or lower security level network to our trusted or higher security level network. And what I'm going to use to demonstrate some vulnerabilities in this is another computer that I've placed on the untrusted network. I've given it an address very similar to the PC we've been using. That was at IP address 70. Oops. 
So we can see that we get a response to that. So we are on that same network. Now I'm going to use a command called HPing, which provides me the ability to adjust the characteristics of the packet that I'm actually sending. In this particular case, I'm going to create a TCP packet that only has the TCP header flag SYN set, which basically represents the first part of the three-way handshake. I'm also going to say, put a source port in there of 53. And let's send it to our target on the trusted side of 10.1.1.1. Sure enough, we get a reply. We get a single reply. And if you look at that, it actually has TCP flags reset and ACK set. That's because we actually found a target, but when the target received the message, it wasn't able to process it, so it reset the session. Now, one thing that's very powerful about the HPing command is it has the ability to act very similar to Nmap and actually perform some level of scanning of hosts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retype in the HPing command but I'm going to add an additional option to it, which is the scan option. And I'm going to tell it to scan the first 5,000 ports on this particular target. Now watch what happens. We effectively get the appearance of an Nmap output that shows us the open ports and services that are running on our target host which is a key piece of information that an attacker uses as they start to plan their potential attack. You can see that each one of these lines had the SYN and ACK flag sent because they were effectively creating the second step of the TCP three-way handshake. And we can see all of the services that, have to, that happen to be running in that particular computer. Now a knowledgeable attacker could take this information go work on potential vulnerabilities within these services and then create his data packet to actually go through the security appliance using a source port of 53 and a destination port of one from this list. So of course the easiest way to combat this problem is to go back to our firewall and simply enable state. So we're going to use the DNS rule that we configured destination port 53 and for our state on the trusted network, again, we click New and Established. We come down on Interface 3. This is where we have our source port of 53, and we're going to take the established state only. We'll commit these changes to the appliance. Of course, we test all of our changes, so we come back to our computer on the trusted network and we retype in an NS lookup, and in fact, the DNS query does get responded to. But let's go take a look at our attack server. Let's go try that same HPing command and see what happens. Nothing. As you would expect, it's trying to start a session. But since we've now enabled state, the firewall or the security appliance is effectively closed to new sessions that originate on the untrusted network. And it only processes those sessions that are in response to previously established sessions initiated on the trusted network. I thank you for your time today and would like to point you to a few sources of some additional information. The first is the Tofino Security blog site, where I recently worked with Eric Byers to create a three-part uh, article on stateful inspection. This is a follow-on to a very informative blog that Eric wrote on the importance of deep packet inspection, or what we would commonly refer to as content inspection, which are all very important aspects of providing the best possible security within the industrial control system networks. I also have a wide range of very valuable resources that you find useful on my website at skatahacker.com where there's a variety of how-to videos, demonstration videos, tools, techniques, um, cheat sheets, and lots of additional training and learning resources. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and wish you a very good day. Thank you.